An experienced double-edged shaver should not get cut. In method shaving, we don't see cuts. We, we don't see cuts very often. Um, that does, that's not to say that you can't get cut. Obviously, you can. But we, in method shaving with hydrolast and water-based shaving media, uh, an experienced shaver of, of four, five, six weeks should not be getting cut anymore. All right? That should not be happening, particularly not on the upper quadrants. An occasion, occasionally, you may get a, 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 a blade line somewhere, a, a cut line somewhere on on, on you know, nick, if you will, on your, on your chin or your jaw, your lower first quadrant, but even those we don't want to see because there are, there are blade techniques that allow you to, to cut these, this jaw and, this, and, and, to, and this, to clear this chin area that are excellent and that work just fine for limiting cuts and, and abrasions. I will cover that, uh, those techniques in a later video. But right now what I want to talk about is what actually cuts you. Well, how do you actually get cut with a blade? Well, actually, it's really not the blade that cuts you. It is what we call the shard effect. And the shard effect is what I was, what I was, refers to what I was mentioning earlier about the fact that the blade degrades, and what happens is we get, we get hanging pieces of metal, much like the old hanging chads from the 2000 election, uh, presidential election, pieces of metal that hang off the edge of the blade from too many blade strokes and too much degradation of the blade. Those are the things that cut you. And we call, in method shaving, we call a cut, a line on the face, we call that a Zorro, like the Z from the old Zorro movies. It's, a, it's a, called a Zorro, a cut on the skin. That we don't want to see. And in method shaving, uh, we, again, it's something we don't see very much. I don't want to see it ever. I don't want to see a cut, a, an actual cut into a person's skin. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's typically um, a serious matter of them not understanding how to build the mix properly. Um, or, or, or leaving something out of the mix, leaving a, a vital element out, uh, or possibly cutting with a dull blade. Typically, a Zorro will happen with a dull blade. Putting more than three shaves on a blade, degrading the blade, and getting hit with a Zorro. Uh, to, to avoid that, you want to keep that blade new, no more than two shaves on a blade. And uh, the other thing that, that we see in method shaving, which is a little bit more frequent, is what we call a blade scrape, all right? And a blade scrape is typically a smudge of blood. That is fairly, fairly innocuous. There's really not much about that that's a problem. Typically, that's going to happen somewhere on the seam between the third and fourth quadrant, as you're as you're coming as you're coming down on your neck. What typically happens there is that the shaver is fusing the third and fourth quadrant he, on the first form. The first time he clears his neck, he's coming through and he's trying to fuse both the third and fourth quadrant. You do not do that in method shaving. What you do is you clear the third quadrant first, you rinse your razor, you come back, and then you clear it again on the fourth. Do not fuse the third and fourth quadrant on the first form. That's that north-south line. Once you've cleared the third and then the fourth, you can go on ahead on the next round if you're, going to, if, you're going to, if you're going to cut another circuit through there, you can go on ahead and fuse them because you will have cleared the beard buttress enough so that you don't get any kind of trapping. Typically, if you're going to get a blade scrape on the neck, it's because you're coming down and you're probably over-trenching the blade right about here at the seam of the third, fourth quadrant. You're over-trenching too quickly. One way to get around that is to get a little bit of cutting balm, massage it into your neck in that area, the hydrolash cutting balm massage it in, and then go on ahead and clear it, and you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't see any blade scrapes at all. Finally, just a quick mention of what I call the fulcrum effect with a double-edged razor. The fulcrum effect is the tipping of the razor. I call it the fulcrum effect. What you want to do is, you want to, there are two, two techniques, two basic techniques, which I'll cover in more detail in another video. I do want to mention them right now. One is the use of the fulcrum effect as a direct pressure or indirect release. And what I mean by that is this. In traditional shaving, what, what you, you want to let the razor do the work. You want to let the, the, let the forward gravitational inertial weight of the razor do the, do the work. And uh, most of the blogs, most of the shaving blogs and forums stress this and they are quite correct. You want, in traditional brush shaving, you want to make sure that the razor, you're letting the weight of the razor do its work, which is why this razor in particular is very, very good. 
Uh, it's got a nice weight distribution on it. It's not the best. There are some other razors that have even a better weight distribution, but they're missing something else that I would prefer, I'd like to see too. Um, but in traditional brush shaving, we do want that, the, the weight of the razor to basically uh, 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 push the razor, razor forward, allow the weight of the razor to actually work the blade. In method shaving, we don't do that. In method shaving, you actually exert pressure on the steel. And you exert, you, again, this is method shaving with hydrolast. This is not method shaving with traditional mix. Remember, the method of method shaving is the forms, cutting the forms, but the actual shaving part involves the use of the water-based hydrogenic media that I created, which is which is goes under the name of Hydrolast. So, in method shaving, you are applying pressure. You are inserting the blade up against the skin. Now, obviously, you're doing this carefully and discreetly and intelligently, but you're using the water-based media, the the uh, so, uh, the um, the water packing power of Hydrolast. Uh, into the skin to allow you to actually cut up against the epidermis, which is the shaving part of the actual process. Cutting the hair, removing the facial hair from the face, that's called basic reduction. Once we do the reduction, then we go on ahead and we do the actual shaving part, which is where we actually clear the skin of the beard, and then the last part is called the finish, where we come back and we pick up any of the buttresses that are left, or any of the residual beard area that is left that we may have missed in either the reduction or the shaving sequence. Finally, um, when you're done with your razor, you go on ahead and you just go and hold on the end caps, release your cap, pull your blade off, and people always ask me where to put them. Um, I just, what I do is I have a little, I have a little uh, dish by the sink. I just throw the blades in the dish, and then at the end of the, you know, when that dish gets full, I go on and I just pack them up. Kind of just take them and I just put them in a Ziploc plastic bag and I just throw them in the garbage. Um, as far as as far as using various techniques that I've heard about, I've never actually seen, but people putting a new edge on these blades or using cryonics to freeze the blade or whatever they do to try to put a new blade on there uh, on these these guys, uh, I, I really would would not waste my time doing that. I've never I've never seen it work. I've never heard of it working really beyond. Uh, uh, to any satisfactory uh, degree, uh, it's a lot of fuss and, and, uh, and effort for nothing. And last thing I want to say is that uh, this is the other technique that we can use in method shaving, the single blade, what we call long blade, as opposed to the short blade. Um, again, I'm not going to get into that today uh, more extensively than just to mention that long blade shaving is definitely a form of method shaving because it's utilizing a single blade. Um, and uh, I would imagine probably in the United States we're looking at two to three percent, maybe one percent of the shaving population uses a straight razor. Uh, there are many, many, many authorities out there who can uh, who can help you with the straight razor uh, in all kinds of forms and uh, strops, honing, uh, 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 waxes, uh, how to, you know, to teach you how to actually use a straight razor. Hydrolast is excellent for straight razor shaving because it has the, again, the condition, the actual, uh, it has the power to condition the skin, uh, to prepare it to, to take this blade directly against the skin, uh, which is, uh, which of course is, is, is the basic uh, function of the straight razor, is to allow you, again, to cut right up against the epidermis in much the same way that we've just been discussing with the double-edged razor. And other than that, that covers the subject of blades and the double-edged razor, and thank you for joining me.